Greetings, fellow detectives, and welcome to Boiler Room Detective. The Case of the Missing Glyco We replaced a boiler that was used for the driveway snow melt system at a high-end apartment building. The new boiler was connected to the existing snow melt system. Before the second winter, we went over the boiler to ensure it was ready for snow. One of the last things we checked was the glycol level. I had to perform the test twice because the system had no glycol. I looked around the basement for evidence of a leak and saw none. The in-ground PEX tubing must be leaking, I thought. After connecting a pressure gauge to the pipe fitting going outside, I increased the pressure to 40 PSI and shut the valves. The thought of digging up the driveway to repair the leak was not something I wanted to do. How would I even find it, I wondered. After explaining what I found, I asked the maintenance technician if he noticed water running anywhere. He shook his head and I told him I would return after lunch to see if the pressure dropped. The pressure stayed the same and now I was a little confused. Checking the water meter, I gasped at the amount of water used over 20,000 gallons in a year. Where could all that water go? How did they not notice it? I told the maintenance person I needed to purchase more glycol, and he asked, how much will that cost? I said, between $1,500 and $2,000. Your system needs about 55 gallons, I said. I better let the boss know, he said. Ten minutes later, the boss called, and she was not happy. The conversation when something like this. Owner, the boiler should still be under warranty. Me, the boiler is under warranty. We connected the boiler to your existing snow melt system, and now the glycol is gone. The owner, do we have a leak? It appears so, but the pressure test showed no leaks. I have it pressurized, and we'll check to see if the pressure drops over the next few days. This will tell us if there is a leak. Where could the leak be? I don't want to throw $2,000 into the system and have it lost. I'm not sure. Let's see if any is lost. The owner said, let me know. Well, you should still cover this under warranty, though. Two days later, I was in the area and stopped by unannounced. When I walked into the boiler room, I stopped suddenly. The custodian was spraying the floor with a hose, and the hose was connected to the new boiler. I suddenly realized where the glycol went. Asking the custodian how often he cleans the floor with a hose, he replied, oh, about once a week. I explained how the glycol disappeared and how that much makeup water could hurt the boiler. The closest hose bib is in the hallway in the slop sink. I can't have the hose lying across the floor. Someone could trip, he said. Well, you shouldn't use the water from the boiler either, I countered. Are you going to tell my boss, he asked. Shrugging my shoulders, I said, I sort of have to. She wants to know where the glycol went. I contacted the owner and explained what happened. She was angry but agreed to have me install the glycol. After installing the glycol, I invoiced the apartment owner. A few days later, I got a check for half the amount and a letter from the apartment owner's lawyer. The letter said I should be partially responsible because I didn't tell the custodian not to use a hose connected to the boiler hose bib to clean the floor. I never knew I had to do that. If you would like to contact me, my contact information is here. In addition, I have my two websites. The Brewing with Steam site has monthly blog posts on steam systems for breweries and distilleries. I have written 11 books on boilers and they are available on Amazon. In addition, you could find some of my writings in these fine publications.